Hi, I'm uh, doing a, 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 a short discussion uh, about things fall apart to go into a little bit more detail uh, to help you all <clears throat> get ready for uh, the test that starts tomorrow. Uh, things fall apart is a book that I have been using in African history classes uh, maybe about probably close to 20 years now, yeah, probably around 20 years now. And the reason I, I like the book so much is that I think it's uh, an effective way to help you all understand how colonialism worked. Uh, you know, I could have you all read Shillington or read you some other history book about colonialism, but, <clears throat> excuse me, but I don't think it, makes the idea of colonialism as real as this historical novel. You know, even though this is fictional, uh, it talks about the way things work. First of all, when things fall apart, um, Chinua Achebe, the, the, the author, he does a really good job of uh, describing pre-colonial life. Uh, now, the story takes place, uh, a lot of people say it takes place in the late 19th century, um, they don't really give a date. And so, uh, knowing what I know about Nigerian history, this could have been the 1890s. It could have been, uh, the period, say from 1900 to 1914 or 1915. It could have been anywhere between 1890 and 1915 because, uh, colonialism did not happen overnight. It happened kind of gradually. You gradually, it was a situation where, where uh, the British gradually went into Nigeria and uh, established themselves in, in different parts of what became the country of Nigeria. And, you know, as you all know, uh, the British in, in, in eastern and western Nigeria, uh, the British established themselves on the coast and then went inland. Now, in northern Nigeria, uh, the British came in militarily and, and uh, defeated the um, the uh, city states of the Hausa. But things fall apart takes place in eastern Nigeria. Uh, now the thing about eastern Nigeria, in particular the Igbo people, because remember, uh, the people in this uh, particular novel are Igbo. The thing about the Igbo people to, that you need to always remember is that the Igbo, the Igbo had a system of, uh, had a social system that really did not include having a, a government. They uh, had age grades. I mean, now they did not have a system with a calendar where they knew the exact date people were born, but pretty much people who were born, say within five years of each other, uh, generally speaking, went through initiation about the same time. And in life, they uh, were considered part of the same age group. And among the Igbo people, uh, now this was a very male-oriented society. Men ran the ran the uh, society. I mean, now women did have some particular, uh, positions of authority, especially like the priestess, uh, you know, like Cielo, which was the name of the priestess uh, who ran the oracle. I mean, she had she was considered to be a very powerful person because uh, she was seen to be in touch with, the, with, 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 the, with one of the local gods. And what she said was very important. But by and large, authority was among men. And men gained authority uh, from a couple of ways. First of all, men gained authority from wealth. Uh, if you had money, uh, you know, if, if you were able to achieve in terms of wealth and property, you were a successful person. Uh, the other way in which men gained authority uh, was through their abilities, their physical abilities. Uh, you know, the main character, Okonkwo, is a large, strong man. They, they, you know, they don't give the exact numbers, but I'm pretty sure Conquo is well over six feet tall. Uh, 
he's probably well over 200 pounds. I mean, if you look at if you look at a lot of uh, modern day immigrants from Nigeria, I mean, if you watch NFL football, uh, if you watch basketball, you'll see a lot of people of Nigerian ancestry. You know, people who either came here from Nigeria or they have family, or, or their families recent, recently immigrated from Nigeria. They tend they, they turn out a large number of really good athletes. If you look at NFL football, if you you know like the NCAA tournament is on right now as as I'm giving as I'm uh, giving this lecture. Uh, you'll see a lot of people from Ni- of, of a Nigerian background who are very successful in sports. I mean, uh, Nigeria, West Africa in general, turns out a lot of big, strong folks, uh, a lot of quick people. Uh, now, I know that sounds stereotypical, but, you know, just uh, that's, that's just actual fact that you have a lot of, of people who are physically gifted uh, coming from that part of the world. So, Okonkwo, you know, if Okonkwo uh, were alive today, uh, there would be a real good chance he he would be some sort of athlete. Maybe he would be a box. You know, if he were in Nigeria, maybe he'd be a boxer. Maybe he'd be a soccer star. You know, maybe he would uh, be a rugby guy or, or something of that nature. Uh, you know, if he was somebody whose uh, family had moved to the United States, uh, he might very well be somebody who is a successful athlete. But anyway, without going too far off base, as I said before, being financially successful and uh, being successful in manly things. I mean, like I said, Okonkwo was a championship wrestler. And also, Okonkwo was known as a brave warrior. Now, Wars that are talked about and things fall apart are, are, are really very small conflicts. I mean, you're basically talking about uh, two villages having a, a really big disagreement and they end up coming to blows. And Okonkwo was known to have killed several men in conflict and have cut off their heads. I, I think it's like five men or whatever that he decapitated. And so he was known as a very, very brave man. Now, this is very significant because Okonkwo, as is, as is established in the beginning of the book, was the son of a man named Unoka. And that's U-N-O-K-A. That's, that's in the beginning of the book. And Unoka was a musician. And he also did not like physical labor. He, he, he was not the kind of guy who wanted to go out and work all day out in the field. Now, the interesting thing about uh, farming for men in this culture was that women actually did the great majority of the farming. I mean, most of what people ate was grown by women. But men did grow one crop, and those are the yams. And, uh, you know, you all can go on to Google, go on to YouTube, or, and you can find pictures of, of African yams. Uh, because, you know, quite often what we refer to as yams in America are sweet potatoes. Uh, the African yams uh, are much bigger. And uh, when they're pounded, uh, they make, uh, people make uh, what's known as fufu out of them. Uh, which is white. It, it looks kind of like mashed potatoes, uh, but it, it doesn't have a lot of taste in particular. You have to kind of put stuff in fufu in order for it to have a good taste. But uh, yams, which produce fufu, though that's the primary crop that men grow. And Unoka, uh, who was uh, Okonkwo's father, uh, really was not a big guy for wanting to work on the farm. Uh, he was not a good farmer. He was not successful because, you know, he didn't like that kind of work. Now, the other thing about Unoka, too, is that Unoka was not a violent person. He didn't like the side of blood. He didn't like fighting. And so because of his temperament, <coughs> he did not do well in Igbo society. You know, he didn't make a lot of money. You know, when, when, it, when time came to fight, he didn't want to fight. Uh, 
you know, he was not a physical guy, so he wasn't somebody who was slinging folks around wrestling and that kind of thing. So, you know, the traditional ways in which men make themselves successful in this society, he did not do. And so, as you all who've read the book know by now, you know, this is like the driving force in Okonkwo's life. Okonkwo, above all else, does not want to be like his father. You know, he saw his father as a, as a complete failure, as an embarrassment. <clears throat> and Okonkwo wanted to be the exact opposite. And this is one of the interesting things about Okonkwo, and one of the things that really makes uh, things fall apart a great novel. Because Okonkwo is very much a tragic hero in, in the Greek tradition. You know, if you look about characters in, in, uh, in, in Greek mythology or, or, or uh, stories like the Iliad or the Odyssey, uh, you'll find people who are, are, are very good, but they usually have a flaw that brings them down. And that's Okonkwo's situation. I mean, Okonkwo has the positive attributes of being a very brave person, being a very hardworking person, and being a person who uh, is thrifty. You know, he doesn't waste his money. He saves. I mean, he's the exact opposite of his father. You know, if if you know, I'm assuming you all read the book. You know, in the very beginning of the book, they tell the story. The the, the author tells the story of uh, of a man who comes to visit Unoka. You know, uh, Okonkwo's father, and to ask for money that he owes him. And Okonkwo's father, you know, just kind of laughs it off and says, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to pay you back. You know, I owe a whole lot of folks money. I don't, I don't ever pay anybody back. <coughs> and so, you know, that is why Unoka has such a bad reputation. And so Okonkwo becomes the opposite. And like I said, you know, Okonkwo is very brave. He's very hardworking. He's thrifty. But... The flip side of that is that Okonkwo sees his father as soft. Now, it's interesting, like, you know, if you all, I, and, you know, I don't mind, you know, if you all want to get, uh, you know, if you all want to get a, a, a book of notes that gives you an outline for the for, for things fall apart, I, I, that's perfectly fine as far as I'm concerned. There are some online notes, I mean, like, for instance, uh, if you go online and Google, you can find Spark Notes, which I think are pretty nice. <coughs> they give you uh, a good uh, outline for the book in terms uh, as as a, as a piece of literature. Uh, and you know, in analyzing Okonkwo, uh, I agree with them in saying that Okonkwo's big fear is that he saw his father as soft, or, or, or the word they use is effeminate. They, they don't see him as a man. Okonkwo didn't see his father as a manly man. He saw him as kind of a, a, a womanly man, you know, for lack of a better word. You know, not womanly in the sense of, uh, uh, of um, sexual attraction. I mean, I know that that's kind of an outdated way of saying things, but uh, he doesn't see his father as effeminate in the sense of... Uh, uh, of kind of an outdated notion of sexual orientation. But in this society, being strong, being thrifty, being hardworking, and being brave are seen as masculine attributes. The fact that uh, Unoka, you know, is it doesn't like fighting, that he uh, doesn't really want to get out and work real hard, those are seen as feminine, which, you know, really is kind of a sexist thing because, you know, when you get right down to it, you know, women in terms of actual everyday work in this society, end up doing most of the work. But, you know, really, uh, without getting too far off the subject, uh, you know, almost all societies are guilty of that kind of sexism, you know, where men see themselves as these hardworking guys, but uh, it's women quite often uh, who end up <coughs> doing the most work in terms of maintaining a household, in terms of child care, that sort of thing. And uh, and in the case of, of Igbo society, actually, you know, raising most of the food that people eat. I mean, if people are eating chickens or if they have a goat or if they uh, are eating any kind of vegetables out of a garden, chances are the women grew that or raised that. I mean, like I said, the men take care of the yam. Excuse me. 
because the Igbo society is not a society where you have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, this is eastern Nigeria. It's in the forest region. You don't have horses or a lot of cows or that kind of thing uh, because this is in the area where, where, where those kind of animals don't really do well. But to get back to the main point, Okonkwo saw his father's way as effeminate, soft. And so Okonkwo became a man who was not good with showing his emotions. Uh, he was not good at uh, controlling himself. He thought that any kind of softness or tenderness was weak. <clears throat> And ultimately, <clears throat> he would end up destroying himself because he was incapable of ever being anything but really rough and tough and, 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 and he was incapable of ever being soft or considerate or thoughtful. Uh, now, for those of you all who, who, who've read the book, you know that you know because uh, Okonkwo's father, Unoka, uh, was so uh, unwilling to really work uh, when Okonkwo has to go out as a young man he doesn't have anything and so he has to get loans from people and work very very hard to pay them back and to also get himself ahead and you know he becomes a very famous wrestler. He defeats a guy who had been, you know, the guy, you know, who's known as the cat who was undefeated. He defeats him. And so eventually Okonkwo, uh, you know, has a big farm. He's able to marry several women. Uh, you know, he's a war hero. And so, you know, as a fairly young man, you know, I, I would say probably Okonkwo is probably in his 40s. You know, at the time the book is taking place, he's not—he's not—he's not an old guy. He's still a pretty young man. You know, he's already uh, become one of the up-and-comers in the village. But the problem is that his temperament is such that he's unwilling to mellow. He's unwilling to ever be subtle. And so, what we see here is that the kind of ambition and drive the kind of force he had really helped him get going as a young man. But, you know, even if, even if colonization had never happened, as he got older, the fact that he was never willing to show any softness was eventually going to get him into trouble. Well, anyway, I'm going to stop this lecture right here. Because if I make them more than about 20 minutes, it takes a long, long time to, to convert them. And so I'm going to stop right here and then I'm going to go to part two of uh, description of things fall apart.